Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to stick to Sweden, but this time we're trying another brewery who I've never had anything from before. So very curious to see how this beer turns out. So for this one we are going to go up to Falkenberry in Hallen County, just a little bit to the south of Gothenburg, and we're having a taste of my first beer from Pine Ridge Brewing. So this one is called the Cranky Crabs Red Ale. It comes in at 5.6% and uh, you know if you've watched the channel before, you'll know that the Red Ale is a style that I've enjoyed for a very long time. So I saw this one on one of the Sea Stemble Laggett lists and I thought, you know, why not? Let's have a go at this beer and see how we get on. So very much looking forward to this and as always, I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. This one is the Cranky Crabs Red Ale coming in at 5.6% ABV. So as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description description below. That's the brewery website linked to my other reviews that I'm hopefully be able to do in the future from Pine Ridge Brewing. Very first time I'm trying one of their beers as I said. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Pine Ridge Brewing then. So as I mentioned to you earlier, Pine Ridge Brewing are based in Falkenberry in Halland County, which is on the west coast of Sweden, just a little bit to the south of Gothenburg and of course Falkenberry is home to the Falcon Brewery, which is, you know, one of the big macro uh, industrial breweries here in Sweden. But the company was started back in 2014 by Mikael Carlsson and Fredrik Johansson, who are home brewers, and they started brewing on a very, very small 200 litre brewery. They later upgraded to a slightly kind of bigger 500 litre brewery, but they also very quickly outgrew this kit. And so they took a trip to the Czech Republic, I believe it was back in 2016 or 2017, and they originally had the aim of buying up a 1000 litre brewery, but it ended up that they came back with a 2000 litre brewing system. But originally these guys were based in an old barn near the Aska restaurant, but Mikkel's real estate company then purchased land that was somewhere around 6,000 square metres or something like that that they bought. And then they started to build a new brewery building which will also contain a brew pub and restaurant. They've got that scheduled to open this year in 2019. But they now have uh, Magnus Tendenmeer as their head brewer and he's previously worked at Preeps Brewery and also the Gotlands Brewery. He worked at Gotlands Brewery for about 10 years years and they're now working to build up their production volume. I think it was saying on the article I read they were aiming to produce around 90,000 litres of beer uh, in 2019 so I do wish them luck on that and it'll be very uh, nice to see their new brewery opening up and things like that. There was pictures of the construction going on and stuff like that. So as I say, that's due to open sometime in uh, 2019. So yeah, um, there wasn't too much more information available on this brewery, um, but it's always cool, as I say, to see to try some of these beers from the newer little breweries that are popping up in Sweden. I always enjoy reviewing these very small Swedish breweries for you here, and I hope you guys enjoy the videos as well. But if you want to learn a little bit more about the Pine Ridge Brewing Company, do check out the brewery website in the description below. You you can follow them on Facebook as well. They do seem to be a fairly prolific brew and their artwork is quite distinctive as well. So if you go on the website, I'm sure it was somewhere around between 15 and 16 um, different beers that these guys had out already. And um, they've got lots of different styles. They had cool sheets, they had IPAs, American Pale Ales. There was a porter which was supposed to be very good. So hopefully I can try a few more of those for you in the fairly near future. But um, yeah, let's get on to the tasting of this one itself. So as I mentioned at the start of the video, this one is a fine 5.6% red ale and this is a style that I've always really enjoyed. So it says on the side here, united in their frustrations over tasteless beer, a group of crazed animals have formed at the Pine Ridge Brewery offering you delicious beer without the fuss. And um, yeah, that's one of the things I guess to say as well as a lot of their beers you know do contain an animal on the or do have an animal on the label and contain that in the name as well but it says on the side here in Swedish and um, this is a strong beer brewed and tapped in Falconberry the beer is unfiltered and then it's uh, it, it, I don't know if you can translate that to an extra um, fermentation, if like it's basically bottle fermented. It's trying to say in the in the in the, the bottle, and then it gives it's very nice to drink. Um, 
to drink straight away. So yeah, nicely presented beer this one as I say. This one is best before the 15th of June 2019 and I actually, I think this might have been one of the ones that I ordered on the 1st or 2nd of January. It was released very very recently and I'm filming this one for you on the 23rd of January and I don't know exactly when you guys will see it but nicely presented beer this one. There you can see the artwork on it and um, yeah that is also on the bottle cap of this one as well. As I say, I think it was, they were producing around 60,000 litres of beer through 2018 and there is plans to scale that up to 90,000 over this, the course of 2019. But yeah, let's get it out and we will get on with the tasting then. So yeah, a little bit of smoke on the opening and we'll get it out and into the glass. So yeah. So as you can see with this beer, it's poured a nice, quite a nice mahogany colour actually. There's a solid um, t two fingers, the head on this one, maybe I've given it a little bit of a, yeah, a little bit too much of an aggressive pour there, but if I hold this one up to the light, it's a lovely, very dark kind of mahogany colour there. There's a solid two fingers of a frothy, light beige coloured head on this one. One or two big bubbles uh, sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that head there. But you know, overall, nothing particularly surprising about this one in terms of its appearance, but it definitely has a lovely, nice, dark uh, mahogany colour there. And that head is going to gradually go down the further into uh, into the aftertaste you go with it, or the further into the beer you go with this one. Sorry, I don't know why I'm mentioning aftertaste at this stage of the review, but if I hold it up to the light, it does have a little bit of a hazy edge to it. But obviously no, nowhere near as hazy as you're going to get from some of these um, from some of these New England IPAs and stuff like that. It's quite a clear beer, this one, um, in a lot of senses. But yeah, let's take a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get on with this. Oh yeah, so this one's a more malty red ale. Um, I do wonder if it's going to be more of an American red ale or an Irish red ale. Of course, the American ones are a little bit sweeter, more caramelly, more red and fruity, whereas the Irish ones do have a little bit more of a kind of bready and slightly grainyish base to them with all those fruity notes as well. Um, but yeah, so nice little bit. Yeah, nice little bit of a, a kind of caramelly malt to this one. It's definitely got a little bit of a brown bready caramelly malt base to the beer. Um, it's got. A, it's definitely got a little bit of a brown, a slightly brownish, bready quality in there as well, which is uh, which is very very nice. Um, I'm getting a lot of um, nice juicy oranges out of this one too. Um, there's a little bit of. Um, there's definitely a little touch of a red fruity note in there as well. Some kind of. Um, it's almost got a little bit of a, a kind of can. It's not cherries, but it's got a little bit of a. I know it, there, there's a little touch of phenol in here, I think, but there's a little bit of a raisiny kind of um, strawberry-ish note to the beer. It's quite a candied strawberry at that, I would say, but definitely some figs, maybe a little touch of a sharper raisin or plum or something like that. Maybe more of a juicy plum, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it's got a nice red fruity edge to it, this one. And um, yeah, it's just, it's really well balanced, actually. The, the, the aroma in this one has a good chunk of malt in it. Um, I'm not getting much in the way of a sort of grassy or floral vibe from the hops. There's maybe a little kind of hint of earthiness in there. Um, but nice, the, the malt base is quite sweet. A little bit of caramel, a little bit of a, you know, definitely a little bit of a, a kind of biscuity vibe to this beer as well. And, and a little touch of bread, you know. Um, but yeah, nice juicy red fruits. Good little bit of orange in there as well. And um, yeah, I just like how everything is um, is going together in this beer. It's definitely, I think this one, going by the aroma, I think this is more likely to be along the lines of an American red ale rather than an Irish red ale. But we'll very quickly find that out when we taste this one. So let's have a go at it then. As I always say, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it because that's always half the experience when it comes to craft beers. But let's have a taste of this one then. So this one is the Cranky Crabs Red Ale from Pine Ridge Brewing Company or the Pine Ridge Brewery up in Falconberry in Hallam County here in Sweden. Let's get stuck in. Slange, skull. Yeah. Okay, so it's, it's, it's not quite as sweet as I was expecting, it does actually, it does have a good bit of a grainy edge to it. This one's, in terms of 
describing whether it's an American or a an Irish radio. It's it's somewhere along the middle actually. It's got a little bit of both. It's a bit of a hybrid. So yeah, um, where to start with this one? So in the middle of your palette you can feel this nice brown bready quality, that just blankets the middle of your palette there. On top of that there's a little bit of a, there is a little bit of a kind of um, greeny quality coming out of this one. The further you go into the aftertaste of this beer, uh, the more greeny it becomes. Yeah, um, so for me, this one, as I say, the further you go into the aftertaste, the more kind of grainy and, and things that it becomes. In the middle of your palate, there is a little bit of a, a kind of sweet, a slightly sweeter caramel note, but that's very minimal, actually. It does, this beer becomes a little bit more biscuity straight away, and the, as I say, the further you go into the aftertaste, the more those kind of grainy, cereally qualities start to kind of push over this beer. The further you go into it, the more I think it's becoming more like an Irish radio rather than an American one. There's not too much sweetness in the malt base uh, of this, actually, but... Um, as I say, it's it, it's definitely an interesting beer. This one, um, it's it's it really is more along the lines of a kind of traditional real rather than being one of the more sweeter American examples of the style. Yeah, but towards the front side of the palate, actually, it does become a little bit more sweeter. Um, you can get a little bit of a, a kind of caramelly note out with this one further forward and it does become a little bit more, it does have an element of sweetness to it but at the same time it's a little bit more toasty and some of the biscuity notes are coming out further into the aftertaste as well. I think when you take a few sips of this one, if you take a slightly bigger gulp of it if you like, I think it does come across as more sweet then but as I say the further into the aftertaste you go the more the kind of grainy flavours are starting to dominate the beer. Um, it really it is quite a grainy, cereally beer, this one, um, but I like how it comes across. It, it's, quite an, it's, it's definitely got an, e an element of drinkability to it more than anything else. Um, on the hoppy side of things, um, I, would, I would guess there's a bit of English hop in here. In the back corners of the palate, you've got a little bit of an earthiness in there. It's quite a, a slightly darker, distinctive earthiness to it. The further forward you go and um, it just spreads out a little bit it does kind of spread forward a little bit um, and you get some nice sort of floral aromatic notes to the beer and then round the very front curve of the palate it's a little bit lighter and grassy on the sides of your tongue though you do get an element of a herbal quality and that slightly darker earthy note that you get from this beer to me is very kind of reminiscent it's a big indicator actually of english hops and i, I do heavily suspect there's english hops in this beer um, and that, I guess, the herbal quality and the slightly darker earthiness really suits the, um, the, the, the more grainy aspect of the malt base in this beer for me. But yeah, I like how this one's kind of um, going together. Behind the front curve of the palate, of course, that's where you get that nice little oily bubble where those juicy, fruity esters start to come out of the beer. And for me, this one has, um, you know, it's got a little bit of, um, it's got a, an element of, it's mainly red fruits that are coming out of this one, to be honest. Um, it's It's got a little bit of a kind of candied strawberry or something like that. The further into the aftertaste you go, you get that. There's a little bit of a raisiny or a kind of plummy note coming out of this one. Yeah, um, definitely a little bit of raisiny or plummy note to this one, but right on the tip of your tongue it's more of a kind of candied, um, sort of strawberryish red fruit that's coming out of this beer. It's got everything that you would want from uh, from a radio, to be honest with you, um, but it's definitely leaning more towards the Irish side of things. From the aroma, you might think this is going to be more of an American radio, but from the flavour, it's definitely more along the lines of... Um, of an Irish one, so yeah, it, it's quite reminiscent of some of the English radios as well, some of the English radios, um, so yeah, if that's your sort of thing, I think you are going to quite enjoy this one. In terms of the mouthfeel as well, um, 
At the bottom end of mid-bodied I would say this beer. Carbonation is uh, is quite smooth. There's, you know, it's, the, the mouth feels well balanced between being oily and slightly wetter. Um, good little bit of hoppy bitterness to this one, somewhere around the sort of 30, 40 IBU mark. Little bit of sweetness coming out from the, the malt base a little further forward, but as I say, further back it's becoming a little, a little bit more grainy. And then some nice juicy fruity qualities to this one as well. There's almost a little bit of a, a slightly woody quality starts to come out of this beer the further you get into it as well. But overall, Really nice example uh, of the of the Irish Red Ale, and it's got a little hint of an English Red Ale quality to it as well. Although the aroma, as I mentioned earlier, does make you think it's going to be more of an American beer. But it's been really cool to review my first beer from these guys. I'm very curious about their smoked vanilla porter that they have. I, hopefully I can get a hold of one of those and review it for you at a future date. Um, but yeah, as I say, it'd be an interesting beer to review this one, and I hope you guys have enjoyed my take on it. This is just a style that I particularly enjoyed, and when I saw it come up, I thought, you know, why not? Um, but yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. This one is the Cranky Crabs Red Ale. Definitely one to pick up if you enjoy these kind of traditional uh, Irish Red Ales or a slightly more traditional kind of English Real Ale. It really fits more into that category um, quite well. So yeah, let's leave it at that. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from the Pine Ridge Brewery as well. And hopefully... I can review a few more of these in the near future. But thanks again for watching and I will catch you guys very soon. Make sure you check out my social media and make sure you have a go at some of these beers if you get the chance. This one is definitely well suited to those of you who like the traditional English and Irish red ales. Until the next time, slant just now and I'll catch you guys later. Skull.